what's up you guys? This is Kat from Old Running Farm. Thanks for joining us. Oh, got a jumping puppy. <laughs> oh, she's so bad. Okay, in today's video we're going to do two things. So it's obviously snowing right now, you can see. Uh, it's sticking and all our other snow hasn't melted yet. So that's fun. We love that a whole lot. What we're going to do is check on all the animals in the snow, make sure everybody is, you know, warm and cool and cute. And then we're going to go inside, warm up, and do some seed starting prep. So let's get to it. Pepper, what do you think about the snow? Hi, alpacas. So we've got Marshmallow, Connie, Linda, that's Mocha, Co uh, Sophie, and Macy in the back. This is Mocha. Hello. Do you like the snow? Right behind her coming up, this is Marshmallow. Hi everybody. Brown one right there is Connie. Excuse me, I was trying to show Connie. Hello. Hello everybody. So everybody got breakfast in here already. John took care of that and it wasn't snowing yet. Pebbles is uh, snacking on something. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of hand feeding, mostly for my enjoyment, not so much for the alpacas. They've got plenty of food and water out here, um, food in the form of hay, so we're going to give them a few pebbles, just pebbles. <laughs> we're going to give them a few pellets just to, uh, you know, make me happy, and then we're going to go check on the chickens. Look at how snowy. This is Marshmallow. Connie. Was that Linda so hungry? That's Sophie back there, Macy and Pumpkin way in the back. And so you see how see how on their coats the snow is like really really sticking? You can see it really well on Connie. What I'm told is that the snow sticks on their coats so much because they're so well insulated that the snow just sits on there and their body heat never ends up getting up to it to melt it because the fiber is just such a good insulator. You know, it's like cold on top but warm down near their skin, which I thought was pretty interesting. And I also heard that even though it might be tempting to like take the alpacas and like wipe that snow off them, it ends up being a sort of better insulator to have it on there because it ends up acting sort of like an igloo, you know? Does that make sense? What do you guys think? <laughs> what do you think? Linda. No, oh, Connie. Hi Macy, sweet girl. All right, all good in alpaca land. Hi, pumpkin. Oh, marshmallow, you're so bossy. Chickens have all pretty much gone inside, so I'm gonna take their food inside their coop. Oh, Pebbles is in my way. That's where the chickens are. So I'm just gonna grab this and bring it inside for them. We'll give everybody some food. Hi, Fajita. This is that Egyptian Fayumi rooster. Boisterous. And Norman is right back there. Oh, and look at this suspect. That we think is a rooster. Fajita's baby right there. That rooster. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was that suspect rooster. Okay. 
Kentucky, so I'm trying not to fall while I walk and talk. Everybody's got food and water, and everybody's nice and warm, and I am not. So let's go inside, warm up, and let's talk to John about seed starting. She get a ring light. She just get a phone tripod. I think the tripod is the problem. You don't think the tripod with the rubber bands is the problem? No, I think the lighting is the problem. Look at my forehead. Hey everybody, John. And Kat. From Old Ready Farm here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. We are going to be creating a spreadsheet organizing our seed starting plan. Doesn't that sound like fun? So last year we did a seedling sale and it went really well. We sold a boatload of seedlings to our friends, families, and neighbors. And this year we want to sell even more. So we are getting organized, we're getting all of our seeds organized, we're going to figure out what we're starting, when we're starting it, and how many, I mean a vague idea of how many of what right. we're starting. Yeah, because we have, right now we have one shelf that has full of grow lights. And we do have a window greenhouse, but right now it's buried in snow. So it's not getting any of the sun benefits as far as warming it goes, so it's cold in there. So for right now we're going to be starting seedlings indoors. For now. And so we're trying to get a jump on last year. Um, so we're about two weeks ahead of where we started planting, or started sowing some things inside. So I think we're gonna start doing that a little bit better. So especially our peppers are a little bit further along when we have the actual seedling sale. Um, Cause I don't, like you said, we didn't sell any peppers last year. Um, so hopefully we can sell a bunch of peppers. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do two things. Um, Catherine is going to go through the seed packets and sort of figure out um, what her favorite things are and what we should like focus on and what we need to start immediately and I'm going to take down all the notes um, and use like the information that's on the back of the seed packet um, to say when we start it, how we start it, if there's any special instructions we need to do like uh, you know stratification or you know whatever whether it needs light or doesn't need light um, anything like that so let's get into it all right so so one thing that i'm doing while we're doing this is i've got a lot of these duplicates so i am taking all of the seeds from each of the packets and putting in, them into like one master packet partially to save time and partially to save brain space <laughs> So you don't need like seven different packets of butterfly yeah. delphinium. It's a little bit stressful for my, my brain to just have like 43 packets of the same thing as opposed to, like if we were actual farmers, we would just buy one bigger pack. And from some places we did. So like this calendula, this is a from Geoseed. That's a thousand seeds in It's there, a right? thousand seeds in this one pack. And if I was to try to get to a thousand delphinium seeds, it would probably be like 75 of these little yeah. home gardener packs. But... Another thing that we're going to think about while we're here getting organized is some of these, right now we're doing all flowers, we're going to grow just for the seedling sale and some we're going to grow just for us. So like a second ago I held up this tall double cut flower calendula which will probably only be for us but I have two really pretty varieties of calendula that we're going to grow basically just for the seedling sale because I think people who want to buy calendula want to buy it for its like medicinal and prettiness, not necessarily for cuts, but we're growing it for the cuts. So we're going to try to figure out how to organize that too. Okay. So we have a white larkspur, this like pretty pastel mixed larkspur, or then this dark purple larkspur. Should I mix these together and have it be a larkspur blend or should we grow these separately? I think larkspur blend is fine. I think so too. I lost the seed. How dare you. Oh, how pretty are these? These are from Select Seeds in case anybody wants to go look for them. So basically what I'm doing is setting up an Excel spreadsheet and so for example we have three different varieties of salvia here all of which have different start dates. Pink Sunday Sage apparently is 10 weeks before our last frost. Victoria Blue is eight weeks before, and Fairy Queen is 12 weeks before, which is the end of this week. It's mm -hmm. Valentine's Day. It is. This is how we're spending Valentine's Day evening. Well, we also went to Lowe's, 
Yes, that's true. And, and Home Depot. And Home Depot. And PC Richard and yeah. Son. <laughs> Why doesn't anybody keep appliances in stock? Come on, man. One thing that we need to decide, and maybe you want to weigh in in the comments down below, I have these two echinaceas, and I'm not, these grow really nicely as perennials if you can get them to. We haven't had a ton of luck growing them from seed. Do you think we should try these? <laughs> Tell John. She made me really self conscious about my receding hairline. <laughs> Tell John how that. handsome he is. In the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you think John is handsome. Just thinking. So, Nigella, this is one thing that we have never grown before, and I'm really excited to try it. See how pretty those are? And it, I've got a couple different varieties. This one has these like really interesting seed pods. I hope we can grow this. And somebody commented on our flowers to grow for your cutting garden. Somebody commented, like, why aren't you growing this? So, I'm excited. And what's that? To be growing this nigella. Love it a mist. See, um, Botanical Interests has a variety of it too. Maybe we'll leave a link for this down below. Isn't that pretty though? Don't those look like so fluffy and fun? Fluffy and fun. That's what we like. I think it'll be fun. I agree. So one of the other things that we're keeping track of, so we just found like this nigella, according to all the seed packs, you know, they don't recommend transplanting. They recommend direct sowing. So that's just another column we have in our Excel spreadsheet that says to direct sow. And that's also good information for us to keep in mind because that means it won't really make a good seedling at the seedling sale. Right. These seeds I picked out while I was shopping for seeds blindfolded. Aren't those pretty? Dara. Dara. Coral Fountain Amaranth, and to go with that, we found a Green Cascade Amaranth, which I think is going to be basically the same exact thing, only green. green. And then there's also a red version. Oh, like like dark red, like the yeah, cool. One thing that we grew last year that was really interesting. This is called Sapinaria. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but I think that's how you say it, right? Yeah, I don't think you're far off. Um, last year, we so you have to succession sow these. These only bloom once and you cut them and then they go. Um, we only had one pack of them and it was this really pretty light pink color. So now I've got a white and then I've got a beauty mix that John will put up. I've actually got two of those. I must have ordered 2,000 seeds of these. So maybe this year we'll actually be able to succession sow them. But these are really like light and fluffy and like frothy looking flowers. And the way we did these last year, so it says sow at two to three week intervals until midsummer for continuous blooms. Sow in early spring when soil is cool and a light frost is still possible. So that's what we did. And then I think these came up in time for Mother's Day or no? Which were these, sorry? Sapinaria? Yeah, I think so. So, they're pretty and we're going to do more. Meow, meow, meow. This is a burgundy amaranth and this one is actually saying that it's direct sow outside. And another thing that's nice about this, this is a botanical interest and it's organic. So that's fun. This is our, our second favorite or our favorite amaranth? I'm a big fan of the red straight up one. Oh yeah? Oh, yeah. I, I like this one. So, John, where's... Oh. I don't think we have one. Not like this? No. Because that has the red leaves. Yeah. I like the green leaves with the red. Hmm. You want me to go look for more? No, it's okay. So similar looking to amaranth in some ways, we also have some varieties of celosia, which I think are really pretty. This this one is really interesting. It's, you know, that like brain setup. And then last year we grew these. These are pompous plumes, so they look a lot like amaranth, only I think we had a slightly harder time growing them, so. That's what I was thinking of, the celosia. Oh, yeah? It's got such a deep, vibrant red. Ooh, loved it. So, and we Just, got a, a ton of the seeds from Geo. So this is a seed variety that we didn't grow last year or ever before, so I'm excited about it. Um, Garden Answer, my absolute hero, grows these. 
They're called Heliopsis Burning Hearts. I think that these are so pretty, and I think those stems look like a little bit skinny and wimpy, but they should still be really fun to grow. This says, this new variety has smoldering dark foli foliage. Fo foliage? Foliage. Um, foliage. And contrasting gold and burgundy flowers. A bushy, strong, upright grower in full sun will attract birds, bees, and butterflies, while the deer avoid it. That's very helpful. Grow in the mid to back border or add to a native meadow garden. Perennial. Zones three through nine. So that's nice. I'm excited about these. These I think we're just going to grow for us. Borage is something that we've tried to grow for several years and haven't had a ton of success on. This is an edible flower. So I think what we're going to do is grow this as a seedling sale and not keep any of it for ourselves unless we have some left over. I'll just stick them in the ground. But those little, um, these little flowers are kind of like spiky almost, and they taste a little bit cucumbery. What are this? Orange. Did we eat that? I tasted them. Did you? After that nasturtium. Yeah. <laughs> so next up is Feverfew. I've got three varieties of it. This one is called Magic Lime Green, and then this is a Magic Single. And then I've got a few that are just called Snowball from Select Seeds. So Feverfew we grew last year. These sold really well in the seedling sale and they grew really nice tiny little flowers but good little fluffy filler of flowers. This, this is Gomfrina. This is a variety of amaranth. I think it's in the amaranth family anyway. These little flower poofs, they look a lot like clovers, but when you touch them, they're like feeling like straw flowers. They're, they're like dry and crispy, which I think will be interesting. And I, I noticed, so this, the picture, purple and white, right? I was reading the back of the packet, scads of thimble-shaped papery flower heads, white, pink, and rosy reds. So I'm interested to see what color these come up, and I think we're just going to grow these for ourselves, not for the seedling sale. So. Snapdragons. People who grow snapdragons well grow them, and they're just like so gorgeous and beautiful. How? How do you do that? Ours are always like teeny and wimpy and kind of bendy. So I wondered if we were growing the wrong varieties, because I was sort of growing like, you know, dollar store snapdragon seeds. Um, so. These I got from GOC, these Madame Butterm... Madame Butterfly. Madame Butterflies. I think this is a... All right, garden answer, you got me again. She, she grows these Madame Butterfly series, and I'm interested to see if these grow better for us, but I'm also a little bit like, should we even bother? We have a lot going on. And right off the bat, another Garden Answer made me buy it. That's Thanks should, a lot, Garden Answer. <laughs> we, should, we should title this whole video, Laura Made Me Buy It. She grew these Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. These she grew for just like the leaves and foliage. It's very pretty. It's, it's like a dark purple, um, very nice looking. So we're going to grow this just for its leaves. How do you pronounce this? Snapdragons. This is Snapdragons? Yeah. And to rent them. And then we're going to try some flower kind of specific varieties of basil. So this is called basil floral spires lavender. So I don't think this is a basil that you eat. And then the other basil that we got was cinnamon basil because you can't eat the grass grows this. So we are going to try to grow basil as a filler for our flowers. Basil. Basil. We also have some dahlia seeds left that we had bought last year. Um, these we tried to grow last year, and I think I transplanted them too early because I think their roots are a little bit sensitive. I was actually reading, um, somebody said that these grow better if you grow them in soil blocks instead of in pots, um, so that way you don't have to disturb the root when you're transplanting. Um, we don't have a soil blocker, so we're just going to try to be gentler and let the roots establish a little bit more. Because I think I was pulling them out too young, so. Well, maybe we can even start them in bigger pots. Yeah, that's a good idea, so we don't even have to. Right, so you don't have to go from, like, one of those big trays with the small blocks to the bigger one to the mm -hmm. bigger one. Maybe we start them in, like, the four-inch pots or something yeah. like that. All right, so, and then last up for our flower farm. Is it true that we've gone through everything already? 
Oh, well, so, okay. We have zinnias and sunflowers that we didn't pull out because we're not going to do much transplanting of those. I might start like a pack or two a little bit early, um, but that's nothing that needs to get started like six weeks, eight weeks before, unless I feel the, the need to. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say. And, and I will. You don't need to be. And Cosmos, that's the other thing. We will direct seed those because those did just fine from direct seed. Okay. So last thing that's in our list for starting ahead is yarrow. This is that same Colorado mix that we grew last year and they did really well. These are another thing that you grow easily from seed. It's perennial in zones two through nine, which is pretty crazy, you know, range of hardiness. Um, and it's nice, I, I talked about this in one other video, but these are nice because they grow as perennial from seed flower first year. So very nice. So John is going to finish entering everything into our spreadsheet. Then once the spreadsheet is made, one thing that we can do is we can sort the spreadsheet by weeks. So like, you know, highest number of weeks first, and then we can see what order we have to plant things. Another thing that's helpful is we made this spreadsheet last year and we wrote down what date we started certain things like our pepper plants, for example, and our pepper plants were too small to really usefully sell at our seedling sales, so now we know we're going to start them two weeks earlier and try to have bigger pepper seedlings. Yep. And maybe what I'll do is I think I'll be able to uh, link our Excel spreadsheet out to you. You know, if you're growing some of the same stuff, you can just use this information at your own risk. Yeah, um, right. That's true. Because, you know, this is all... Kind of coming off the back right. of the seed packets. Yeah. So this is everything that we're going to grow in our flower farm and flower seedling sale this year. We're also going to put out a video where we talk about the tomato and pepper varieties that we are picking out and excited to grow. And we'll talk about what other seedlings we're going to grow for the seedling sale and what other varieties we're going to grow in our little vegetable farm. We don't do, we don't do super well with the vegetable farming. We do much better profitability wise with the flowers than we do with the vegetables. So um, that's kind of just for us to eat and have fun with. Um, yeah, growing all kinds of cool tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for watching this video. We put out new videos every Monday and Friday. We go live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And if you want to watch us drive ourselves crazy with spreadsheets, then uh, come back next week and we'll do it again. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.